Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. We are now in the second episode of our moon base build. I'm super excited to be sharing this to you. This was like one of the things that I've always wanted to build, but in a proper way. Like sure, I built my uh, base on Minmus, but that was with like wheels on the landing modules. And it, it's kind of stupid. That's not how they would do it in real life. This is more like how they would do it in real life. So... Ah, uh, just, it's amazing. And with, with the final part of the base, this isn't the final part, this is the second part, but with the final part, um, my base was fully able to generate science using the science bay and, um, you know, tr um, do research projects on the moon and then eventually beam back all the data. So here I, let's just talk about what I'm doing here. So basically, here I'm just trying to maneuver the module. Because gravity is so low on here, you can actually maneuver it with a little bit without the um, the little cars that I'm driving around. But it's a lot easier with the cars. So essentially, what you might notice here, uh, I'm never going to be able to connect these two parts together because the one that's stationary doesn't have any docking ports on the little ore container. So eventually I realized that, but at the moment I'm like, where the hell am I going to put this part? Just, just, just moving around on the surface of the moon with these things attached was so exciting to me. I was like, this is just amazing. And I want to thank um, Kerbal Space Command, that channel, and Ruben for just showing me how to do it, how it's possible. Like, I just didn't know. Uh, and now I know. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm away. The solar system is mine. I'm Duna. Duna is definitely going to have a base. Can you imagine putting a science, uh, scientific research bay on Duna and then, you know, performing scientific experiments? Uh, and the amount of uh, research points you'll get would just be incredible. Anyway, at this point in my base build, I thought I would be able to attach all three of these parts, but in hindsight, I wouldn't be able to. You know why? Because that little module in the middle there the legs are too big on it. If I'd have uh, really, really planned this out, like this took me days to do this, to think about it, to plan it, um, to bring it to fruition like you're seeing now. Uh, but I just missed that part. I missed that part. I put two bigger legs on it. Um, you know, sometimes you do miss some stuff. But so in the, in the end, I moved that module out of the way. And it's basically these two, um, these two bigger structures that are going to be joined together. Uh, but you can notice the ore bay, uh, the ore container is in the way on the other one. Uh, so eventually I'm going to remove those. Um, but this is cool. This is going to be, you know, the completion of this contract. And you get a fair amount of money for it. I actually overspent in my budget probably by about 200, 250,000 Kerbal credits. But um, that's okay. You know why? Because this is a permanent base on the moon. Um, it's going to continually send back scientific data. All I have to do is select it in the space center, go there, transmit the science. Um, there is one thing, however, that was wrong. And you know what was wrong? I didn't have enough battery power to send back. Like, eventually, I managed to get something like 500 science out of the little science bay that I land later on in this video. And uh, it just had, like... It just didn't have enough, um, you know, battery power to send all that back. So I'm going to land another module containing, like a service bay containing loads of batteries. Anyway, here we are on this part of the video where I've actually now put Bill the Kerbal inside that other module. And I'll be able to remove the fuel tanks from the side by doing it that way. Unfortunately, that part doesn't have a remote guidance unit. So you do need to put a Kerbal in there or connect it to these cars in order to remove uh, those fuel tanks. So here you go, now I'm removing them. And it's as simple as that. But you know, if you had all of these landing modules with remote guidance unit units on it, it would be a bit easier. So as you do these things, you learn so much and it will make building a base on Duna that much easier. Um, yeah, so at this stage, I, I wasn't quite sure still how I'm gonna get them connected. I'm trying to like push push my little car into it and, and connect up somehow but uh, for some reason it was rejecting it and in the process I ended up moving the uh, previous base structure so eventually anyway I grab hold of it but then the side docking ports on my car are kind of being magnetically attracted to the base and it's it's all a bit of a faff but it's just brilliant 
So you can see I've kind of grabbed hold of it at the wrong angle here. Then you've got the business of controlling your car to try and get it into the right place and grab it at the right angle. But just doing this stuff is so exciting. You can just imagine them doing this, uh, you know, in real life on the moon. I wonder if we'll ever build a moon base. We really should revisit the moon. If we can visit Pluto with an unmanned probe, uh, then we can definitely build a base on the moon. But for some reason, US government, all other governments don't seem to want to. Can't see why not, but there we are. Anyway, I finally got these two parts connected to each other and I'm like, yeah, it's essentially a functioning base right now. It doesn't actually produce anything much, but it's part, it's two thirds of the way to completing the contract. Super exciting. Look at all this data I can get as well. Sorry, I've fast forwarded the video. I'm just, just so excited. <laughs> My little Kerbal's gone out of control. But that's that's like another load of science. Now, recently I've kind of learned this. I should have known before, but on the moon, you've actually got loads and loads of different biomes, the same as you've got loads and loads of different biomes on various other planets and stuff. You know, every different planet has its own biomes. And in each biome... You can do all the scientific experiments. You can do temperature, pressure, seismology. You can uh, do surface samples and EVA reports. There's so much science to get just on the moon. So if I started my career again, I would probably concentrate more on the moon and Minmus rather than exploring all the outer planets as early as I have done. Nonetheless, I keep getting sidetracked here. Here I am landing the final piece of the puzzle. And actually, that's not a bad landing. You see, I've actually improved in getting closer to my original landing spot. Just over, just under 400 meters away. Which is quite spectacular. And there we go. Decouple the little sky crane. It's got quite a lot of fuel left as well. 1,645. So I would be able to take that back up into orbit and uh, leave it docked there for future future missions where I can drop other parts down. You know, reducing costs and all, all sorts. As we are a space agency, you don't, don't want to spend too much money. Anyway, time to connect my cars together in some sort of caterpillar-like formation. And uh, go and drive and pick up the final part. And this is, this is exciting. You're getting towards, sort of towards the end. A few minutes left where I will be assembling my base. A future missions that I do intend to uh, show you are... Me, I already mentioned bringing down the battery uh, pack bay, but there was something else I wanted to br bring down to the surface, and I've forgotten entirely what it was. Nonetheless, I will show it you in, in, in an upcoming video. Um, it's going to be super cool. I can send back all that science data, and then I'm probably going to work on a Duna base, which is quite difficult, I think, just because of the weight of the modules that you need to drop. Um, they're like really... You need quite a large, high delta V vehicle with enough thrust to weight ratio to actually get it off the, off of uh, Kerbin. So I may end up building a space base around Kerbin and then launching into Kerbin orbit, docking, refueling, then going on to Duna. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, the two little cars here, I'm using them in tandem here, dragging this science bay across the surface of the moon. Luckily, it's not too far, so it's quite it's quite a far drive, but uh, it's not too far in the grand scheme of things. If you remember, last episode, I landed two kilometers away and six kilometers away from the landing spot. So I've skipped forward here, saving you the the trouble of watching me driving across the surface with this thing at a, at a snail's pace. And I'm near enough ready to finalize the assembly. If I could just line these two up, it's not as easy as it possibly looks uh, these little things on the side of my cars kind of get in the way maybe they don't need them in future but they do come in handy as extra connection ports so who knows I might redesign this rover um, but yeah it's just a case of wiggling these two docking ports together one on the science bay one on the base as it is look <laughs> my, my little docking port on my car is trying to drag the base around gravity grab hold of the freaking base and don't let it move Magnetic attraction is working, and have we got a final base assembled? We have! That is our final base. Look, I'm just so excited to have a base, a, a place we can call home on the moon. We've got two Kerbals there. We've got Bill and Bob. They're just going to sit in, inside their little structures and, I don't know, drink space tea or whatever they have, little sachets of dried food and whatever. 
But these bays are probably bigger than they look. When the Kerbals get out, they seem almost as big as the, the structures themselves. But I don't know. I like to think, I like to use my imagination and these things are bigger than they look. Look at these giant solar arrays as well. I love them. I've got all my little scientific instruments. It's time to gather data. We've got temperature. We've, only, we've got 1,200 approximately electric charge. Hence why I need to eventually land a battery bay because... Um, once you've got like 500 science to beam back, kind of takes a lot of electricity and I don't know how to do it in parts so it doesn't sort of cancel the transmission, which is what it does seem to do. Nonetheless, my little gravity gravioli detector, which is awesome. Um, yeah, time to transmit some more data from Bill or Bob, one of them. One of them got out and uh, there you go, another one. He's also got a load of data to beam back. So I got tons of science from this. And you know what I spent the science on? Bigger rockets. <laughs> Just giant freaking boosters so I can actually go to like Elu and stuff. And coupled with the new planet mod, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll include a link in the description of a future video when and if I show it to you, uh, which adds loads of other planets to the game. But they're further out than where Elu was. Elu itself is not a planet on its own now. It's a moon orbiting another planet. Um, it's just so exciting and I want to get hold of all sorts of other mods like future future tech and I still haven't unlocked the uh, Xenon gas drive and stuff like that still need to do that so part of getting those points may involve the base being built on Duna now at this point I just want to ask if anyone is interested in sponsoring me on patreon which is a crowdfunding website you can sponsor me from as little as one dollar a month to keep my channel alive that would be very much appreciated the link is in the description thanks for watching everybody take care